I'm Taylor Reed, and I'm a sports performance coach intern here at Marquette for the fall of 2016. So before we start, I want you guys to caption this. What do you think these guys are up here for? What do you? Me. I don't know. <laughs> Surfing pace. <laughs> okay, so yeah. These are the top three surfers ranked right now. Um, this is, he's number one, he's Connor O'Leary. That's Ethan Ewing, and this is Federico Morales. And this is how much money they've made from surfing throughout their careers. So, so we're going to start off with some fin facts, fun facts. So to start this off, we're going to do a little experiment. I want all of you to hold your breath as long as you can. And I'm going to time you and let you know how you compare to a professional surfer. So ready, set, go. Okay, and just when you're like done holding your breath, you just like give me a little wave. I'll let you know what time is. So to start, when people think of surfers, a lot of times they think of that like do, sub, you know. So this symbol actually means hang ten, which is a move that they do on a surfboard where the back of the board is in a wave and you walk to the top of the board and you hang all ten toes over the top. So that means hang ten, hang loose, whatever. There's Jay Beebs <laughs> doing it. Um, so surfing has actually been around for about 5,000 years. There's evidence of cave drawings in Peru. And, uh, but really it's only become popular in like since the 1970s, 1980s, where there's a whole bunch of surfing movies that came out and like perpetuated the culture of you know, hanging out on the beach, listening to music, surfing the waves, whatever. I'm out. Um, <laughs> all right, so you guys made it not even a minute. <laughs> Yeah, so a professional surfer can hold their breath. Yeah, not, not even a minute, guys. <laughs> okay, it's a minute now. A professional surfer can hold their breath for about four minutes on average. Um, fun fact. Why? Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> because actually surfing a lot of the times, one of the, when they wipe out, they get pulled underneath the wave. So being able to hold your breath and control that is pretty important for the sport. But I'll talk more about that later. Um, this picture up here is the world record for number of people on a surfboard. There are 47 people on that surfboard. And then sharks, which is another thing that people often think of when uh, talking about surfing, are referred to as men in gray suits. And according to a study done by World Surf, about 60% of surfers do actually think about sharks while they're surfing. So they're not the only, we're not the only ones who think about it. Um, so the rules of surfing. Their season is pretty much March through, De through December. And it's broken up into like a fall season and a spring season. Um, for the judging, there's five judges who score the waves. Surfers are allowed to ride as many waves as they want, but only the top two count to their score. Um, judges score on things like the commitment and the degree of difficulty, the innovation of the wave, um, the percussionist, combination and variety, and then speed, power, and flow. So there will be five judges scoring. The lowest score and the highest score gets thrown out, so it's really just an average of three scores. And you're scored from 1 to 10, so the best score you could possibly get would be a 20 out of 20. Um, so each wave is about 20 to 35 minutes, and on average, surfers get about 15 waves. So um, that's like two or three minutes a wave, or, or actual surfing wave. Um, and then for the number of heats, it's based on elimination, so the more you're doing, the better you're doing, the more waves you're going to go through. Um, and then this up here is uh, the World Surf League logo, and they are the ones who run the competition, the major competitions. And then this here is the men's championship, which is what I base my programming off of. There's 11, uh, 11 different events, and nine of them are counted towards the surfer's actual cumulative score. Okay, so uh, this is just the, a video of Connor O'Leary, who was one of the guys I showed you on the first slide. And um, uh, I'll just talk about the needs analysis for it. So the main movements that surfers do are paddling and swimming, pushing off the board, balancing, and then as you can see him doing, he's doing like carves and turns and aerials. So basically what kind of... Uh, needs they have is uh, an explosive power to be able to push themselves off the board, uh, balancing core stability to obviously stay on the board and perform the types of, types of tricks that he's able to do, 
and then they need muscular endurance for all the paddling and swimming, as well as the ability to recover quickly, because I mentioned earlier, they go through lots of waves and it's an all day thing. So they need to be able to paddle, get up on that board, and catch another wave. Um, their main energy system is aerobic, mostly from all the paddling they do, and then the anaerobic as well for pushing off the board. So injury analysis. Um, the main form of injury that surface experience is from contact with the board, blunt force trauma, so concussions are a big problem. Um, but also there are knee dislocations, ankle dislocations, and shoulder dislocations. The knee and ankle come from the twisting movements on the board, and the shoulder is if they happen to wipe out with an arm overhead. That's a really common way that they get injured. And then um, it's also possible for them to tear their ACL or MCL because they're essentially planted on one movement and then twisting over those limbs. Um, and then finally, like other sports, overuse injuries, particularly the shoulder. Shoulder impingement is a big problem for surfers. So for my program, I made sure to plan a lot of shoulder prehab in there as well as yoga because yoga is a really great way for surfers to strengthen overall their musculature as well as their core stability and balance. So here's my annual plan, the first half. Um, these are the first five competitions with the ones towards the end of the season being important because as the season goes on, you want to accumulate as many points as possible. So towards the end of the year, it's when it really starts to differentiate surfers. So I start off with uh, intensities higher in the off season, obviously, and decreasing and tapering to when they actually have to compete. And then you can see my lifting, for li days for lifting, days for conditioning, and days for prehab. And then here's the second half of the season, with the end tournaments being the most important, because that's when it'll come down to just a few surfers. And then this is just a basic overlook of how I made it. So highest intensity in the off season, tapering down to when they're competing. And that cycles through two times because it's kind of broken up into a fall and a spring season. So here's a sample day workout from my off season, which I'll have them lifting three times a week and conditioning two times a week. My main focus is endurance, balance, and recovery. You can see the endurance aspect and that they're doing um, high reps, a lot of sets with low weight. The balance, there's things like push-ups on the balance board to mimic being on, in, on the waves in the ocean. And then for recovery, I have some hit formatted workouts so that they have to do a set amount of work as hard as they can and then have a couple seconds to recover and repeat it. Here's my preseason. This time the focus is on power and balance. So I have lighter reps with medium weight. And then I have like squats on the balance board, and uh, also I have a lot of ab components, especially twisting, because that's really important for surfers to be able to complete their aerial stunts. And then for in-season, I have them lifting twice a week and conditioning twice a week. So one of the really important movements that they do is um, paddling movements. So basically what you do is you hook up a resistance band to like a squat rack, and you lay a bench in front of it, and they lay down and pull on the resistance bands to mimic being on a surfboard. So this is the most uh, sports specific. So I tried to program the most sports specific movements for that. So here's an example of a conditioning program. Um, I have them paddling and swimming because those are two of the most important components for surfers aside from being on the board. So they warm up and then I have them paddle at progressively higher intensities and then swim underwater as long as they can. Because as I mentioned before, sometimes you get knocked off board and you're underwater for until you can figure out how to get back up to the top. So it's really important for surfers to be able to control their breath and recover as quickly as possible. So I have them repeat the paddling and swimming three times and then they get a rest and then they cycle through that five times total or three times total. And then for swimming I want to make sure that they're able to get to shore if they need to or find their board or you know account for that because they are swimming in the ocean, so injuries happen. Um, so they warm up with swims, and then they're doing short distances multiple times to get that recovery in there again. So I just want to take a second to thank all my coaches who helped me out and mentored me this semester.
specifically Stu, Chad, Dan, and Emily, who helped with my programming and who I learned so much from. So thanks to some pretty gnarly dudes. <laughs> and dudettes, Emily's a dudette. Um, any questions? Questions for Taylor. Let them fly. It's like you were talking a lot about male surfing. Is there a female surfing? Oh yeah, there's a female league too. Um, I think they have 12 competitions instead of 11, but so you don't think the there, same. there wouldn't be any major like program changes then. I don't think so. No. How would you, if you're working with, um, this is like shortboard aggressive surfing, if you're working with a like big wave surfing group, um, how do you think you would adjust the program for like big wave surfing versus more like stunt surfing? Big wave surfing, I th the main thing that comes to mind for me is the injury risk. It's a lot higher with big wave surfing and that's when um, they have a lot more to account for with that. So I guess I would focus more on the swimming and paddling because that to me is a big concern, but other than that, they would probably not need as much trick rotation and stuff, so that would be what I would change most, more conditioning, I guess. Can you talk about how you might do balance exercises to prevent being on a surfboard on water? Sure, so um, one of the things I would want to be able to do is have them uh, start from a ground position and hop up and be able to balance, so even though they would not ever really be on one foot, it would be good for them to practice being able to stabilize themselves, and also I would put them on balance boards to work on their balance progressions. So. Any other questions? No? Good. All right, good job. Thank <laughs> you.